Good morning and welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday as we are going to finish uh, what we started this last time. Uh, so let's uh, just briefly go over where we've been so we know where we're going today. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, we are going to we, we are talking about uh, this sense of uh, independence. Uh, dependence to independence. Dependence says that I'm depending on others and other events and other things uh, in order to understand my mood uh, and my day. Uh, I need to learn to choose my behavior, choose my reactions, choose my emotions. I need to think about what I'm doing. What, what's the end game? What's the end thing? How do I want people to think about me in the future? And then priorities, have integrity, put first things first. When you have these private victories, then you are, you are starting to own your own situation. You're saying, I'm not relying on somebody else for how my mood is going to be today. I'm not relying on everything being wonderful for me to be in a good mood or for me to be agreeable that day. And so I'm moving to a sense of independence, saying that I'm independent of the outside elements that I just react to. I'm going to choose to respond. So that's moving from dependence to independence. Now, today I want to talk about this idea uh, of independence to interdependence, that we're going to move uh, to a different uh, situation, a different scenario. So uh, let's just talk about that for a second. And uh, look at this uh, for a few minutes here today. Now, I dropped my eraser, so let's pick this up. Um, all right, so independence. But we want to move to interdependence. Now, interdependence says it takes more than just me. I'm okay in, on my own, but I'm better for it if I have other people. I'm better for it if I am involved with other people. So what does that look like? These public victories, and you can't have public victories until you have private victories. You can't go from dependence to interdependence. You've got to move through independence first. Learning to own your own behavior. If you just walk in and try to, to do the uh, public victories, but you don't have them inside, uh, it's going to eat you up. You're going to burn out. You're going to have a lack of integrity, uh, and you're going to fall apart. You're, you can play the game for a while, but you're going to fall apart after a period of time. So, win-win. The first thing that we need to do is if we're going to understand the importance of maturity and rise in our maturity out of independence, me, 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 to we, if I'm the move from me to we, then I need to realize that we both can win if we put enough effort into it. We can find a way for both of us to win in this argument. Hey, married folks, how many times you fight? A lot, right? We we all fight. We all have our op. We all have our issues. We have our dealings. We have our disagreements. Uh, we fight. Things happen, and what happens is we normally we fall back into some old behaviors, uh, such as uh, I, I I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Now, if you can win, that's awesome. And if you can't win, hey, that's too bad for you. But I'm going to win or um, lose, lose. This is a situation where, hey, if I got to lose in this deal, so do you. I'm taking you down with me. Uh, you know, kind of idea. Misery loves company kind of uh, moment right there. So lose, lose is, a, is not what we're talking about. Uh, sometimes you're in relationships that you may, or uh, whether it's marriages or whether it's kids or whether it's business relationships, uh, church relationships, committee relationships, uh, any of these things. It works everywhere, Okay. If we, if we have a lose-win mentality, what happens is some, th this person, if that's you, you lose-win, you don't feel like you're worthy to win. You don't, you, you don't feel like your voice should ever be heard. Hey, I just want to make sure you win. I'm going to make sure that, that you have. See, this happens a lot. This happened a lot in the boomer generation of marriages. A lot of boomer marriages uh, crumbled when one spouse decided they were valuable enough to go to school, valuable enough to get a job, valuable enough to have their own thoughts and their own feelings. And most of the time, it was the guys who couldn't understand that. What they did for so long is that the, the submissive wife idea said, well, you know, just whatever my husband wants, whatever my husband needs, whatever my, you know, and, and churches even back that up and said, hey, wife, you need to submit. I mean, we had a, uh, we had a, uh, 
We had a religious leader that even made some public statements that it doesn't matter if he's beating you up. You should just submit to him. Ah, totally wrong. Totally wrong. You have more value than that, okay? Uh, and to have this consistent lose-win uh, is a problem, uh, and we need to realize uh, that that's not a healthy environment. Uh, and, you know, I give in to my wife a lot, okay? I just do. And, you know, uh, back in the day, the guys, used, oh, you're just whipped because you don't know. You know, I love her. I care for her. Uh, and, and when it matters, I make, my, I make my point known. But it's not like it's a lose-win. It's fine. Whatever she wants. I don't care. It's, it's okay. That's different. That's not what we're talking about. When we actively lose so they can win, um, that's a problem. And you're going to need some therapy for that uh, to get through that. Uh, then uh, you also have a win-lose. It's the opposite. Yeah, I'm going to win and you have to lose. Now, see, this first one is I want to win, and I don't really care if you win or lose. This one, I'm going to win, and by golly, you have to lose. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and that's, that's problematic as well. That's abusive. Uh, it can be a problem. Uh, that's not a healthy relationship to have in any capacity, whether it's church or business or school or home. Doesn't matter. That's not a healthy environment. If we want to have maturity and grow in maturity, we have to think win-win. I want to win, but I also want you to win. So how can we both win in this environment? You know, Gordon Gecko wouldn't understand this. You know, greed is good, win at all cost, kill them when they're down, kick them when they're down. Um, you know, th this, this is how we've been raised. This is how we've been taught. This is, this is where we are so many times. And I also think that's why we have such a high divorce rate. I think that's why we have so many churches plateauing and declining. I think that's why we have failed relationships so often is because we don't have a healthy mentality. We haven't moved from me to we, and it's not about win-win. We have to think win-win. That's the first thing you got to do to move up in the maturity uh, scale. You got to think win-win. Uh, that means we have to understand that there is an abundance mentality. So many of us live with a scarcity mentality. We live as if to say that there's not enough to go around. So I got to get what I can get when I can get it. And hey, don't care about the rest of you. Okay, that, that's not healthy. It's not healthy. Maybe capitalism, but it ain't healthy. Okay, we need to understand and respect ourselves and understand and respect other people, and how can we both win, which means I believe there's enough that we can both win out of this deal. We, we both may give a little, but we both can take a little, and we both can win in the end. But that takes a choice. Again, back to the private victories. I'm going to choose to do things. I'm going to have priorities in my life. Okay, see why that plays into this. Um, but we have to have this abundance mentality. There's enough to go around. We can all win. We just got to work at it. Uh, and so the next thing we have to do is we have to listen. Now, we think we listen, but see, a lot of times people just ignore you. They don't even, they don't even pretend to listen. They just flat out ignore you. You start talking, they walk out of the room. You, you start bringing up a subject, they roll their eyes. They drop their breath. They start having a conversation with somebody else across the table. Man, I find this in committee work all the time. You know, if they're, if, they're, if they're not in the discussion, they're going to have another sidebar discussion because they don't respect enough the, the rest of the people in the team to pay attention and listen to what's going on. I find this at home. Don't you find it at home? You find it in, 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 in these relationships that people just ignore you. I mean, they just walk out of the room as if you don't, as if it doesn't even matter. <laughs> well, there's also a pretend listening where they will act like they're listening, but they're not really listening. You might even say, hey, what's the last thing I said? And they can repeat what you said, but they're not actively listening to you. They're not paying attention to you. They're staring off into space. They're doing something else. They're playing on their phone. Um, they're just ignoring you. Uh, or they are selectively uh, listening to you. Now, guys, we're bad at this. We... We tend to be really bad at this. We selectively listen. We hear what we want to hear. You know, uh, blah, 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 sports. You know, we, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you win. That's awesome. 
you know, and you know, we, we don't we don't listen really well, we don't pay attention, and we wonder why our our spouses don't feel like they're loved. We feel we wonder why our kids don't feel like they're loved, because we only hear what we want to hear when we want to hear it. Uh, and, and that's that's awful. We we need to we need to listen better than that. Um, now, what we're getting to is this sense of actively listening. See, in selective listening or pretend listening, uh, this is something that happens a lot. We're only listening long enough for us to get our piece to say. We're all we're doing is waiting for the breath. Ever have anybody do that to you? Have you ever done that? Man, I am sad to say I have done that, and I know that many of you have done that too. You're just waiting for them to take a breath so you can put in your two cents. You don't really care what they're saying, and you're not really engaging with what they're saying. You just want to say your piece. What, ha what are we doing there? If we are ignoring them, pretending to listen, not really listening, we're only waiting for them to take a breath so we can get our, our say in, you know what that really is? That is a win-lose moment. That's not maturity. We're not actually doing what it is we're supposed to be. We're not thinking win-win, because if we're thinking win-win, then we're going to actively listen. We're going to listen with our eyes and our heart. I'm going, to, I'm going to feel what you're saying. I'm going to hear and listen to what you're saying. And there's a difference. Trust me, hearing and listening, there's a difference. But I'm going to, I'm going to actively engage you. I'm going to put my phone down. I'm going to put my paper down. I'm going to put my pencil down. In fact, I'm going to shut off my angry thought or my, my, my thoughts altogether. And I'm going to focus on what you're saying. I'm going to look you right in the eye. And I'm going to pay attention. And I'm not just going to fake it. I'm going to feel it. Try that at home someday. Try that at work. Try that in your next meeting. To actively listen. To listen with your eyes and your heart. That you feel what they're feeling. So I don't want to do that. Well, that is a choice you make. But if we want to mature, if we want to grow up, we have to learn to listen. And, hey, let me tell you, I struggle with it. I still do. We're not perfect. But we have to learn to listen with our eyes and our heart, to feel what they're feeling, to see them. I see you. I feel what you're feeling. And to respond in that way, I, I feel that you are very upset about this. I mean, you are really passionate about this. Can you tell me more? And see, this is this, is this idea of seeking first to understand them before you try to be understood. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. Thought. You know, I, that, that's in, interesting. Tell me more. Can you help me understand why you feel that way? Help me understand, hey, I, I don't understand this part. Can you explain this part a little bit more to me? You say, but I just want to say what I want to say. Well, that is a lower maturity level. You can do it, but you're really not going to get anywhere in life. You're really not going to get anywhere in relationships. And you're really not going to get anywhere in business if all you're doing is just plowing through and being a bully. There's no space for bullies anywhere, not just a school playground. There's no space for bullies at business, at home, at church, on the ball field. We don't need it. We don't have time for it. There's no space for that. We have to learn to stop being a bully and realize, hey, you can win and I can win. And I want to I wanna hear what you're saying. I want to hear what you have to say. And then take the time to do that. Well, the next, the next idea is this, uh, is this habit of cooperation. This habit of cooperation. Now, the big word is synergize and synergy. And that was a big word in the 90s. But really, it's just about having co creative cooperation. Realizing that I have solution A... Okay, and you have solution B. Now we can fight about that all day long, and I can fight for I can fight for my A. You can fight for your B. And the reality is, A may solve a problem for a while, and B may solve a problem for a while. But if we would creatively cooperate together, we would see that together we can come up with option C, or maybe D. Or maybe even E, and the more we work at it and the more we work together at it, 
We get better at it, and better ideas are generated. But that means I have to realize we both can win out of the deal. I need to seek first to understand what you're saying before trying to make myself understood, and so does the other person, okay? And then we can figure out, you know what? I have an idea, and you... So, hey, maybe there's a better idea. You know what? I've got, I've got a three-point plan, and you've got, uh, you've got a three-point plan. Hey, guess what? Uh, I'm, you know what? I can scrap that. Hey, guess what? I can scrap that. And, and you know what? We can, come up with, we can come up with a better plan because there's space and time for a better plan. Interdependence. It's learning to realize I need you and you need me. I am valuable. You are valuable. I deserve respect. You deserve respect. But until you have the private victories of choice and time management and priority scheduling, until you, until you figure that out, you're not going to be able to understand how to do this. You won't, have, you won't have the inner fortitude that you need to move forward in your maturity levels. Well, that's a lot to take in in two weeks. I hope you'll go back and review last week's or this week's. If there's somebody that you know that, that needs this, uh, be, feel free to share that. Tag them in it. Send, them, send this to them. Uh, I, 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 just, I love Whiteboard Wednesdays as we just get to talk some practical stuff uh, and realize uh, a few things. Um, you guys have a great day, uh, and we'll see you next time.